Welcome back. We have put a strong tranquilizer in the prepared food and given it to Maul so she can give it to Tuscan. And hopefully that will knock him out. It's kind of confusing to me that in the uh, mission with Trelane, you could drug the beer by just using McCoy's medkit, but here you need to distill the tranquilizer out of rotten fruit. It works though, I guess. It is just a bit inconsistent in terms of puzzle uh, solutions. However, we still need something to give to Tuscan, or to attempt to give to Tuscan. So he will call for Maul instead. And for that, we simply need to go get some more fruit. fruit comes free easily, dropping into your hand like it belongs there. That's all we need from here. You know, I'd question how it's possible if they were just in this room and then came from that door. But considering the layout of the ship, I'm not even surprised. Alright, let's head back to Tuscan. Actually, I guess going down from there would have been shorter, technically. Not that it makes an awful lot of difference. Alright, let's see. Me. They're after me! We'll hurt you, so just stay back. We really don't want to hurt you, you know, but you gotta stay back. I'm fairly sure Rackaback does want to hurt us. Captain oh, great. Kirk, I see our investigations bring us together once more. The Klingon observers seem interested in remaining to watch what goes on here. So, they are, I see. Let's try giving him the fruit, which I think he will not accept. I am hungry. So hungry. It looks like good, wholesome. Maul? Where's Maul? I don't take nothing from nobody. Nobody except her. You do something to it. Make me different. You'd rewire my head. <laughs> For me, Tuscan? I thought you might be hungry, so I brought you something you can safely eat. You know you can trust me, Tuscan. Yeah, I know I can. And I am hungry. Didn't want to eat something I couldn't be sure of, though. Give me that. Now I want to take a nap. Mom, you watch out for me, okay? And he just takes a nap on the floor. I am feeling a little down, Captain Kirk. But don't bother about me, I'll be alright. I listened to my brother Rackaback, and well, Tuscan's just confused. I don't think I should go into it right now, but he thinks if people knew all about this place, they'd hurt his mind. Actually, be careful, brother. Remember that Tuscan warned us, people might seem nice, but not really be nice. I don't know what would happen, actually. After all, I can't read the future. Hmm, seems like Gormagon wants to tell us something. And sorry, I accidentally clicked the first part away, but I think it was the same as what he said when we first talked to him. But Rackaback seems to be stopping him. I'm more interested in a good fight than in talking. So we still need to deal with him, and in this particular case, I don't think there is any other way than to just stun him. Rackaback falls, defenseless against the power of the phaser. An inelegant solution, Captain Kirk, but efficient. I 
listen to my brother Rackaback and to my friend Tuscan. They say we have to protect this room and keep anyone from getting into it. Tuscan's afraid. Well, Tuscan's just confused. I don't think I should go into it right now, but he thinks if people knew all about this place, they'd hurt his mind. Actually, I'm sure things would change. It might be a change for the better, maybe. Maybe not. I'm not sure what to think of you. I just don't know if I should trust you. Well, Gormagon, I think you should trust them. They've repaired the garden, which is good for all of us. They gave fresh fruit to my boy Stan Bob, when even his own mother couldn't manage that. Gormagon, neither my aide nor I came aboard this ship expecting anything but treachery and veniality from these people. They've impressed me, and I commend them to you. Well, despite some misgivings I had, I'll accept what others have said about you. I think I should show you the way into the heart of the phase, the secret entry that Tuscan is so afraid of. I feel that something good can come of this. A secret entry. That's what he was hiding. Um, how Tuscan manages to stay sleeping like that, I am not sure. Hopefully he won't fall over backwards because it looks like he'll just tip into the hole. Actually, can we help Tuscan now that the guards aren't in the way? Captain, he's unconscious. I can't see any point in putting him at further risk. I wanted to help him, not make him more unconscious or whatever you thought I was trying to do. Alright, let's just go into the secret passage. The heart of the phase, apparently. That should be interesting. Okay. Very interesting. It looked like the Klingons came with us. This room appears strangely compressed, giving a sense of closeness that borders on the discomforting. Every wall is interlaced with what looks like a web cage of electrical wirework, with almost organic-looking nodules and bubbles. You have the distinct sense that you're inside a machine and that it doesn't seem to occupy space in any natural fashion. Okay, that's strange. This looks almost identical to the containers that house the phase. It does resemble it, for sure. In this section of the wire web work, you see new wire replacing a burned out section. Interesting. I guess there was some damage. This looks almost identical to the containers that house the phase. Some kind of equipment is dimly visible behind a translucent bubble. An opaque hemispheroid through which nothing is visible. The captain is uneasy, certain that this claustrophobic seeming room holds challenges yet to be discovered. The Vulcan's interest in his surroundings is sharply piqued by what appear to be irreconcilable spatial anomalies and discontinuities of technologic sophistication. Okay. A man whose life is devoted to organic living things, Dr. McCoy seems utterly out of his element, surrounded thus by inorganic machinery, and the uneasy sense that this too might be life of a sort. Recognition of the broad realm of possibilities, challenges, and curiosities this room represents shines reflected in her dark eyes. A Klingon crewman wearing a look of disdain and distrust. No d new description for the Klingons. And although I'd love to talk to the crew here, unfortunately this room is kind of glitched and it will trigger um, a conversation that is not supposed to happen until after you solve a puzzle in this room. And kind of triggers it halfway, so it doesn't really make an awful lot of sense. So yeah, I'm not going to talk to our crew in this room just because it would break things. Actually, I think since we don't need the fruit anymore, you can give it to the Klingon again. No, I don't think that's necessary. Or not. I think you could have in the uh, other room. I don't think it makes a difference, though. We've already done it once. 
Let's scan some stuff, though. This web wire wall reads somewhat like an antique hand-wired computer circuit, Captain. And at the same time, like something which surpasses even what can be found aboard the Enterprise. This damaged area does not appear to be functioning, but based on information I acquired from my interaction with Puzzlewit, I could attempt to repair it with a connector and some wire. Hmm. Well, we do have uh, the light tube and some wire, so hopefully that will do the trick. The bubble around the machinery seems to be part force field and part physical obstruction, although not quite like anything I've seen in the past. The device visible inside seems inaccessible, but it seems similar to the computer I saw damaged in the oratory. Nothing unusual about that object, Captain. Really? That's kind of surprising. Alright, let's try and fix this using the light tube. If you'll bring that over to me, I might have a better suggestion if I took a closer look at it. Okay, looks like that didn't work, but maybe Captain Clar has some insight. I worked with things like these when I was younger. Given our surroundings, see if you don't find this more useful. I know what he did. A constructed mechanism permitting an electrical power supply to be safely joined to an appliance or device. Looks like he shaped it into some kind of connectors, which I guess is what we need. Let's try it out. Allow me, Captain. Let me do that. The information I acquired from Puzzlewit's mind indicates this could be a delicate operation, easily mishandled. I think you will find it fits just here. Lieutenant Uhura, if you will bring over that length of wire while I hold this in place, I believe we can get this repaired speedily. Certainly, Mr. Spock. With that in place, I can see that it will easily fit here. The final connection is made, and Uhura smiles widely. That's it! That fixes the broken connection! I guess that's the only reason she came? Thank you! I am now once again whole, and no longer an intelligence divided against myself. The system you repaired will re-enable me to analyze and update received data from external and internal sensor systems, altering conceptual constructs of previously acquired data. These systems appear to have been malfunctioning for some time, although it will take additional review to clarify all conditions. Much may have been lost permanently. Jim, do you notice? The phase isn't switching between I and we like it did in the oratory, and the voice is a single note. Not a harmonic chord of blended voices. And it hasn't suggested we go get something to eat, either. I am chagrined that my disabilities have endangered my mission. The compassion was launched with the best of intentions. If I can answer anyone's questions, I will endeavor to do so. Captain Kirk, you don't mind if I ask a question, do you? You'll get your turn, Klingon. Just hold your horses. Other things come first. Be my guest, Captain. Ask away. You'll get your turn. Be my guest, Captain. Ask away. I see no reason why we can't let him go first. That you give me first place to speak is a mark of honor, Captain Kirk. And does not pass unnoticed. Particularly in light of the urgency of your own questions. Phase, this ship passed through the heart of Klingon space. We were not even aware of it until it was nearly out of our territory. We backtracked it and found it must have closely approached places we find sensitive. We expect assurances that data you may have collected there will not reach the hands of those who mean us harm. We seek proof. We expect you to download your entire memory into our ship's computers, that we may search it for data you have no right to. Thereby would you not acquire data to which you have no right? My aid speaks too strongly. 
While it is true we are interested in the knowledge and technology you possess, technology to pass through our empire undetected, knowledge of how to twist space back upon itself, for that data, we will treat with you as one civilized people with another. But it is a justified request that we ask you to destroy all data dealing with anything you learn within our borders. Had I any data, I would agree to steal it. However, as you should have deduced, I have none. Until my sensory systems were repaired, my ability to receive and process data was severely impaired. Especially in regard to external data updates. Based on my presentry analysis of nearby space, I would speculate that my only data on your present sphere of influence would be as that area of space existed a very long time ago indeed. That is information for us to know, not you. Erase it. Silence. Hayes, we would welcome access to that information, but on the same basis as we would bargain with you for technological data, we have more to offer with you, I believe, than the Federation represented by these others. Faze, do not be hasty making that decision. I lack sufficient data to make any assessment. I can give no answer at this time. The primary reason we came aboard was to find a way to stop you from landing on top of our colony on Atopus which would certainly kill thousands of our people. Now that your external senses are functional, have you altered your plans about where you intend to put the ship down? I don't actually know what they were saying in Klingon just then. Hopefully somebody will uh, translate it and put it in the comments. Anyway, this seems like a reasonable thing to say, but let's see what other options we have. How did your systems become damaged? I'm curious about what your builders really had in mind, shipping off all these people off-planet. There seems to have been some shadier agenda. The eugenics wars of our own past produced some of the ugliest abuses in human history, and notorious characters like Khan Noonien Singh, whose name still resounds with infamy. How is this ship you call the Compassion justified? Actually, I think we're gonna I'd be say, that's all for now, Faze. I, the yeah, we're gonna say all of these. Aboard was to find a way to so stop let's just you start from landing on one. top of our colony on No, Captain Kirk. I will certainly not set the compassion down in a populated area. Now that I can see it is there. I am at present in communication with the planetary authorities, and they are directing me to a stationary orbit until further arrangements can be made for my wards. Then are there other questions? Is the ship still set to land on Atibus Colony? How did your systems become damaged? I am sorry I cannot explain this at this time. I do not even know if it is explicable. But I will search my memory for an answer for you. Then are there other questions? Is the ship's... Please cl I'm curious. Please clarify the anomalies we have perceived while being on board. That's actually kind of interesting. The weird hallways not going where they're supposed to. I am sorry I cannot explain this at this time. I do not even know if it is explicable. But I will search my memory for an answer for you. Then are there other questions? Is the ship still set to land on Atibus Colony? Too bad, it would have been interesting to know. Please cl I'm curious about what your builders really had in mind, shipping off all these people off planet. Let's ask there McCoy's seems to have been question. Some shadier. I have no information about your eugenics wars, but a fundamental social philosophy of the builders was that civilized people of goodwill would tolerate and value variability as a sign of cultural and social health. That a civilization will be judged by its tolerance of disparate ideas, by how it treats those who cannot protect themselves. Be they very young, very old, or otherwise challenged. By the measure of altruism extended to those less powerful, even when rightfully in possession of something desired. A central aspect of Vulcan philosophy is embodied in the Idic. Infinite diversity in infinite combinations. 
It would seem the builders pursued similar high ideals. High ideals, perhaps, but that does not explain why these people are in space phase. More than this I cannot explain. However, you can locate additional library data under the heading Compassion. Oh, I haven't made it available. I should have done that immediately. I can't imagine why I didn't think of it. Fascinating, Captain. That instance of forgetfulness makes it possible to speculate that the phase is not wholly restored after all. Then are there other questions? Is the ship still set to land on Atibus Colony? It is a bit weird that it would forget to do that. I guess it did it now, so that's good. Please clarify. I'd still like to know a little more about why these people were shipped into space. I'd be interested to learn more about those who built this ship. Their achievements certainly seem erratic in sophistication, but much of it goes beyond even what we are capable of accomplishing today. For example, the Paralands medium for recording computer data is something we are only now beginning to explore. I think there's much to be learned from these people. My best recommendation is to examine the library records under Builders or Technology. There is more data than I can easily explain. Then are there other questions? Is the ship still set to land on Athlete? I'd still... I would still like to learn more. That's all for now, FaZe. I assume we can talk to you if we have more questions. I will do my best, Captain. Although intelligent entities often find that there are more questions than answers. I guess so. Let's take a look at this uh, thing at drop down. This seems pointless. An iridescent crystalline lens about the size of your palm. I guess that's one of those para lenses. Although the lens magnifies things you look at through it, somewhat like a magnifying lens, the image is distorted and warped. Pretty soon, this seems like a non-productive way to use the para lens. You can also notice that the uh, bubble around the machine here appears to be gone. An unusual computer terminal device. This machinery appears to be a read-only computer terminal. The configuration and construction seem quite unusual, to say the least. But evidently, the same kind of device we saw was damaged in the oratory. It seems that that is a reader for the parallel, so let's get that. The crystalline lens feels cool and surprisingly heavy, with smoothly polished edges. And use it on the reader. The lens slips easily into the terminal's reading port and the screen activates. Compassion. There are a number of choices here. Compassion. Theology, decision. Shambrum. Philosophy. Builders. Technology. Exit database. Compassion. Which is the name of the ship? Um, so let's start there. The name of ascetic class starship. The name signified the compassion for the travelers, all of whom were diagnosed with life quality inhibiting disorders of class three or higher. After a full generation of debate on ethics, a consensus opinion was reached, the so-called Diagi decision. Final plan destination of the compassion was a return to Shambrum in four generations. Now, just one minute, FaZe. Are you listening? You keep saying you can't remember or you lack data or what have you. Even the library data seems vague, incomplete, and contradictory. If you don't know, then who does? Forgive the pause. I had to think long and hard to discover if you had correctly passed this final test. You correctly identify the heart of the matter. Let me introduce you to my builders. This is madness! Faiz, what is this? Despite our misgivings, you have shown yourselves to be the representatives of spacefaring peoples we, the Brassica, would most trust to make first contact with. The contest has been in progress for some time, situations in which your true colors have been explored. The invitation has been made. You may return to your ship if you prefer. 
or you may step through whenever you are ready. Then, the final round begins. I think you have it right, Captain Clark. This is madness, Jim. I think, Bones, it's Shakespeare who had it right. Though this be madness, yet there is a method in it. I agree with the sentiment, Captain Kirk. There is something more going on here, far deeper than first appearances have suggested. I imagine you will accept the invitation. I will certainly choose to go, whether you do or not. I believe the invitation is extended to all. I will not permit that, Captain Clark. I will take all methods to prevent you. I will not go. It is certainly a Federation trick. You begin to sound like Tuscan in the other room. Get a grip of yourself and act like an officer. All right, so it sounds like this whole thing was another part of the tests that we have been undergoing. And now that we have passed this, we get to finally meet the Brassicans through this weird portal looking thingy. Captain, I'm getting a thoroughly anomalous reading. This passage definitely defies the physical laws of space and time. Are you suggesting it might be some kind of space warping portal, Spock? The doors on this ship have given previous evidence of this kind of warping. Although the passages on this ship seem normal, they appear to curve space without resorting to hyperspace generation, like the Enterprise's engines. That represents achievements of technology beyond our own abilities. They certainly aren't as capable in the field of medicine. These people are suffering from genetic and chemical conditions that we've been able to treat for the last century. It's barbarous to pack them into this ill-conceived generation ship and hope by the time they make the return trip that those left behind will have figured out something more humane to do with them. Captain, if I may interject, that disparity is something we've glimpsed throughout this ship. There is a sophisticated food delivery system and a food-producing hydroponics garden. It is as if the parts of this ship don't fit together, or as if there were some purpose beyond the obvious. I was thinking the same thing myself, Lieutenant. I'd like to have a talk with whoever is behind this. And I also, Captain Kirk. I believe our observations have been as anomalous as yours. Moreover, I don't think the Fays are the ones we must address our questions to. I believe all those inconsistencies are merely because this is as another test. And the only thing we can do is go through. Captain Clark, I will not let you depart. These human scum have tricked you. If I have to beat up all of you, I will. You, Vulcan, you understand orders. Help me knock out my mad captain, and I will take him away and out of your hair. Looks like he doesn't want to let him go. They are arguing and... Oh. <laughs> Guess we're going without the Klingon aid. But we are still going. Mr. Scott, they've disappeared off the sensors. What do you mean, laddie? They've just vanished. Yet there is method in it. Captain's log, star date 6269.3. The landing party and the Klingon Captain Clark have passed through a portal in time and space. We're about to face tests by the Brassica. Success will mean formal relations. Failure will mean... unknown. Welcome. We applaud your willingness to confront the unknown. Please tell us what's going on. Where are we? Patience. I cannot answer all yet. Those elements of our society still ill at ease with your cultures have more questions. We've had enough. No more foolish tests. More tests. Let's just get on with it. I'd like to hear what the others think. We've had enough. I'd like to hear what the others think. This is kind of the only non-root option, so let's just pick that. I will withdraw until you address me again. Okay, it seems like the Brassicans have pulled us through some weird portal into an even weirder dimension of Tetris blocks for the final part of their test. They are kind of strange looking, I have to say. A quite alien looking being 
its greenish skin hinting a plant phylogeny. Large eyes set well to either side of the head suggest a creature whose ancestors were more prey than predator. A third central eye augments 3D vision. A vibrating tympanum looking like an open mouth is the sound-producing organ. The brightly colored combs on its head might be personal adornment, rank significators, or tribal markings. Interesting, they might be plant-based? I guess, hence brassica, which is after all the Latin word for cabbage. Very on the nose. Can we scan him? A sophisticated projected image similar to those on Onius 2. Another projection. It's not a living thing, Jim. Spock's tricorder is more useful here. That makes sense. Well, we'll see what else the Brassicans want from us in the next video.